सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस न्यू सेशन सो इन द लास्ट सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द एनालिसिस ऑफ फर्स्ट ऑर्डर कंट्रोल सिस्टम राइट सो नाउ इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फ्यू ऑफ द एनालिसिस ऑफ द सेकेंड ऑर्डर कंट्रोल सिस्टम एंड दिस इज वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट सो दिस माइट बी कमिंग फॉर द एग्जाम्स द प्रॉब्लम्स रिलेटेड टू दीज कॉन्सेप्ट आर मस्ट क्वेश्चन इन द एग्जाम इट वुड बी कमिंग इन द एग्जाम ओके so there are few problems which we are going to discuss around uh, related to the second order control system also so also i have told you that the programs that is pi pd pid control are all based on the second order control system okay so what are these second order control systems let's uh, uh, see this in detail okay so this is about the analysis of second order control system okay so the first thing is the closed loop transfer function of second order control system is given by C of s by R of s is equal to omega n square divided by s square plus two. This symbol is called as zeta. Okay, it is written as like this. You can even write it as like this. It's up to you. It's up to your wish. So this is the perfect way of writing this zeta. The spelling is z e t a. Okay, this is called as zeta. Okay, please uh, remember this, students. Okay, from now onwards, whenever I see this symbol, I'm going to say it as zeta. Okay, z e t a zeta. S square plus two zeta omega n s divided plus omega n square, where this omega n is called as natural frequency. Okay, natural frequency. So yeah, please remember this. Okay, students, this is the general closed loop transfer function which you need to be remembering. It is very very important. This formula you should not forget at all. This is you should paste it in your mind. Okay, while solving the problems, you should paste this in your mind. This is very very important. So where the de denominator part that is s square plus two zeta omega n s plus omega n square is called as the characteristic equation. Okay. What is it called as? Characteristic equation. Please don't forget it, students. This is very very important. This word, the denominator part of the closed loop transfer function obtained, c of s by r of s, omega n square divided by s square plus two zeta omega n s plus omega n square. Okay. The denominator part is called as characteristic equation. Okay. Yeah. For example, let's uh, uh, here they have uh, taken one example, one uh, simple block diagram with one feedback. with one gain and one feedback path which uh, is having one unity feedback so write the closed loop transfer function c of s by r of s is equal to g of s divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s okay so that is 10 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 2 divided by 1 plus 10 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 2 so this after further simplification what we will be getting 10 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 2 plus 10 and we will be cancelling these terms so this would be remaining so that is 10 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 2 if we solve it we would be getting it as s square plus 3s plus 2 plus 10 we are having so that's why we were getting it as s square plus t 3s plus 12 okay so this is one general example so here we can see that in place of omega n square in general general equation we are having it as 10 okay omega n square divided by s square and uh, the coefficient of s is 2 zeta omega n so we can see that 2 zeta omega n in, in this example it is equal to 3 okay plus 2 zeta omega n s plus again omega n square omega n square in place of omega n square it is 12 so now you would be asking why the values of 10 and 12 are not equal since the both terms are omega n square only uh, that is one uh, a thing here okay whenever doing during the calculation part we need to be considering the characteristic equation only and uh, substituting the values of omega n square and zeta okay we should not consider the numerator part okay the characteristic equation is very very important here yeah so this was all about the analysis of a second order control system the closed loop transfer function is simply given as this term which you not which you should not be forgetting okay so now let's discuss the effect of zeta okay zeta i have told you that this symbol is called as zeta on second order system performance okay yeah so now let's uh, see this effect of zeta what is it so now consider r of s is equal to 1 by s okay so that is uh, c of s by r of s is given generally as this form so now since we have taken r of s by 1 by s so this would be c of s is equal to omega n square divided by s is multiplied since r of s is equal to 1 by s right so s into s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square so we need to be finding the roots of this equation okay 
the characteristic equation by uh, taking the formula of uh, quadratic formula that is minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a where the value of uh, a here is 1 b is 2 zeta omega n and c is omega n square okay yeah so that is s is equal to minus b that is minus 2 zeta omega n plus or minus square root of b square so this its square is minus 2 whole square is plus 4 zeta square omega n square minus 4 into a into c the value of a is 1 and the value of c is omega n square so that would be 4 omega n square divided by 2 into 1 that is 2 okay so now 2 zeta omega n plus or minus so in this term uh, 4 omega n square is common take it outside and write it as uh, the remaining term zeta square minus 1 divided by 2 so 2 zeta omega n plus or minus uh, 4 omega n square its root is square root of uh, 4 is 2 and omega n square and root getting cancelled so 2 omega n would be remaining into square root of zeta square minus 1 divided by 2 so that is equal to s of 1 comma 2 therefore 2 roots we are getting so in this numerator term we can take 2 common and uh, we can cancel this 2 out so the remaining terms are minus zeta omega n plus or minus omega n into square root of zeta square minus 1 okay so these are the two roots here two roots we are obtaining because since we are having plus and minus one is minus zeta omega n plus omega n square root of uh, zeta square minus one and another one is minus zeta omega n minus omega n square root of zeta square minus one so these are the two roots okay so now put those two roots in the uh, transfer function closed loop transfer function that is c of s divided by omega n square divided by s into okay s into the roots which we are obtained for this equation that is these two roots okay s plus zeta omega n plus omega n into we are uh, we should be uh, writing s plus okay yeah so this these are the roots obtained and this is the simple closed loop transfer function and this is the effect of zeta in the second order control system okay so now let's get to the next concept so we have few more case studies here okay we have uh, around uh, four cases four cases where we have we are changing the value of zeta in this uh, particular equation the we are checking the range of zeta in all the four cases and uh, con and uh, checking the response of the system okay what is the response of the control system obtained well while we uh, change the values of zeta in a particular range okay let's see that so now case 1 okay case 1 where the value of zeta lies between 1 to infinity that is zeta value is positive okay whenever the value of zeta is positive the roots obtained are minus zeta omega n the uh, since uh, these are the roots obtained right in the derivation part we have solved minus zeta omega n plus or minus omega n into zeta square minus 1 okay whenever the value of zeta is positive you need to be remaining, uh, remembering that the roots are real, negative and unequal roots. Okay. Okay. So that is the roots are minus K1 and minus K2 in general. Okay. Since the roots are negative. So both the roots are minus minus so minus K1 minus K2 and unequal roots. So two different different roots. Roots are real. No imaginary terms are there. And the roots are negative. Whenever the value of zeta is positive, the roots are negative and unequal roots. Okay. So that's why c of s to consider c of s is equal to omega n square divided by s into s plus k1 okay so this one term i have taken it as k1 into the second root is s plus k2 okay since it is minus k1 so it's actually minus of minus k1 okay so that would be s plus k1 here also minus of minus k2 s plus k2 so again uh, can take one simple uh, partial fraction and uh, obtain the value of c of t taking the inverse laplace transform okay where the value of CSS here we are getting it as A which is the steady state output okay again the output here we can see that the condition of the output is it is purely exponential and the response obtained is such systems are called as over damped systems okay please remember very carefully whenever the value of zeta is positive the response the graph we are obtaining like this so this is one amplitude this is uh, these are the different points okay where it goes it rises and reaches to 1 and it becomes constant okay here the value of zeta changes 1 2 
3 and goes on up to infinity these are the responses we are getting such systems are called as over damped systems okay whenever the value of uh, zeta lies between 1 to infinity we can say that the system response obtained is response obtained is over damped okay yeah so this was all about the first case so now the second case we can uh, see, uh, see that when zeta is equal to 1 the roots are uh, s is equal to uh, so in this case uh, substitute the value of uh, zeta as 1 so that is uh, zeta is equal to 1 so this would be 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 is 0 so this whole term would be getting vanished okay right and here we have one more zeta term right uh, zeta square in place of zeta uh, but put uh, the value of zeta as 1 so 1 square is 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 so this whole term would be getting vanished okay and along with that zeta omega n so zeta is equal to 1 so the remaining roots here are after substituting the value of zeta we are getting it as minus omega n comma minus omega n since the plus or minus omega n term gets vanished because zeta is equal to 1 so here the, the two roots are the same right so we can see that the two roots are real not imaginary and the two roots are both are negative along with that the roots are equal so we can say that whenever the value of zeta is equal to 1 the roots are real negative and equal roots okay yeah so therefore the value of c of s we are getting it as omega n square divided by s into s plus omega n again it is minus of minus omega n s plus omega n into s plus omega n okay that is c of s is equal to s into c of s is equal to omega n square divided by s into s plus omega n into s plus omega n so that is s plus omega n the whole square okay again take the simple laplace transform and uh, it's no need to write this okay just directly write uh, after sub uh, substituting this the answer which we are getting is uh, css is equal to a keep this as it is okay and after simplification the answer we, don't, we are not required since the value of zeta is equal to 1 so draw one plot and draw just one single curve okay and this single curve is rising and it is uh, moving till zeta is equal to 1 and when whenever it reaches the amplitude 1 it becomes constant so we can say that the system is critically damped okay the response here is critically damped whenever the value of zeta is equal to 1 the response obtained is critically damped and the roots are real negative and equal roots okay yeah so now case 3 when the zeta value lies between 0 to 1 okay so now let's see what what happens when zeta lies between 0 to 1 so the roots obtained here are s of uh, 1 comma 2 this is the root so whenever we substitute the value of zeta so we can we know that the since the value of zeta lies between 0 to 1 so we can say that it is always lesser than 1 okay so whenever we uh, subtract uh, these two terms that is zeta square minus 1 so if the value of zeta square suppose uh, the value is 0 0.9 so 0 0.9 square uh, we, we would be getting it as 0 0.81 and 0 0.81 minus 1 so 0 0.81 minus 1 is a negative answer right so inside the root if we get one negative answer we know that it's always complex term is obtained right so that's why we can say that the roots are complex conjugate with negative real parts okay this, since the sign is minus zeta omega n so that's why the roots obtained are complex conjugate with negative real parts okay so now substitute the value of c of s omega n square divided by s into s plus zeta omega n okay minus j omega n this, since the roots are complex conjugate j omega n square root of 1 minus zeta square s plus zeta omega n into s plus zeta omega n plus plus j omega n into 1 plus zeta square okay so now so uh, c of s is equal to omega n square s into s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square okay after the simplification part then uh, c of s is equal to take the laplace transform taking inverse laplace transform this was the term obtained okay so the transient response with some oscillations this is one of the transient response which are getting with some of the oscillations and here is one more important uh, concept and the term that is omega d here is equal to omega n into square root of 1 minus zeta square okay where this omega d is called as the damping frequency and omega n i have told you that it is called as the uh, natural frequency okay the relationship between omega d and omega n it is given as omega d is equal to omega n into square root of 1 minus zeta square okay 
so this is the response obtained whenever the value of zeta lies between 0 to 1 okay that is it reaches uh, the uh, it reaches it rises and goes above 1 again it, uh, it the amplitude slightly de decreases 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 and it becomes constant okay so this system is called as under damped okay most of the uh, transient responses which we are getting is always under damped okay yeah so this is the third case where the whenever the value of zeta lies between 0 to 1 the response obtained is under damped okay and this uh, under damped system where the the curve reaches to constant and reaches to zero it's called as the settling time and the value of zeta which here which we have normally taken it as 0 0.4 okay so this is the fourth case where the value of zeta is equal to zero okay so whenever the value of zeta is equal to zero the roots obtained are plus or minus j omega n okay since the value of zeta is zero since the value of zeta is zero we know that zeta square uh, minus one that is zero minus one is minus one and uh, minus one is square root of minus one so square root of minus one is j square square root of j square so root and square get cancelled only j would be remaining so the roots are plus or minus j omega n we can see that the roots are complex conjugates with zero real parts there is no real parts only in this there are no real parts whenever the value of zeta is equal to zero purely imaginary okay so whenever the value of zeta is zero the roots obtained are purely imaginary okay so then substitute the value of omega n square s into s plus j omega n s minus j omega n omega n square is equal to s into s square plus omega n square this is of the form a plus b a minus b okay that is s uh, uh, s square minus j square omega n square okay since the value of j square is minus one so minus of minus one omega n square that is s square plus 1 into omega n square that's why we are getting s square plus omega n square here okay so that is uh, again take the simple uh, partial fractions and uh, this is the obtained expression here okay this in this case whenever the value of zeta is equal to 0 okay the response obtained is the undamped system and this is completely oscillating okay so here it is completely oscillating without any change in amplitude okay whenever the value of zeta is zero the error the steady state error obtained is zero because we are not obtaining any error any error the signal is purely sinusoidal or purely what to say exponential or any curve we are getting which is not uh, fluctuating the amplitude remains constant and we are getting a purely oscillating frequency so whenever the value of zeta is zero the response obtained is undamped okay yeah so here i have prepared one small table here okay in order to be clear about all the range of zeta so here there are four ranges of zeta zeta equal to zero zeta lies between zero to one zeta equal to one and zeta is positive okay that is from one to infinity types of closed loop poles nature of response and system classification that is response whenever zeta is zero types of closed loop poles are purely imaginary nature of response are uh, Poles are uh, called as roots, okay? Types of roots, okay? The nature of response is oscillations with constant frequency and the response is undamped. Whenever the value of zeta lies between 0 to 1, complex conjugate with negative real part, damped oscillations, under damped. Whenever zeta is equal to 1, the roots are real, equal, and negative. The nature of response is critical and more exponential in nature. The response is critically damped. Whenever the value of zeta is positive, the roots obtained are real, unequal and negative. Nature of response is purely exponential, purely oscillating, okay, uh, purely exponential, sorry, and the response obtained is overdamped, okay. Yeah, so this is the table, please make a note and these are all the four cases which are very, very important. So please uh, refer the video and uh, also subscribe to this channel, like, share, subscribe and also you can refer our playlist here which is appearing in the right of our screen and all the model question papers are solved model question paper playlists are available okay so please refer those playlists and uh, try to solve the model question paper solution so that you would be scoring well in the exam okay so please like share subscribe and refer these videos thank you